If your hard drive fails, how do you get your computer working again? In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your hard drive with something called an SSD, which is like a hard drive, but it's much faster. I'm going to show you how to put the SSD into your computer, then how to install Windows 10 onto it. This is Dave's Tech Rescue, where I solve your problems with computers, internet and technology. If you have a question you'd like to ask me, leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss my next video where I might be answering your question. Today's question, my computer won't start up and I think the hard drive's failed. How do I replace the hard drive with a new SSD and install Windows 10 on it? I'm going to be replacing the hard drive on this HP notebook, but what I'm showing you should work on most laptops and desktops. First of all, let's see what you're going to need. Obviously you'll need to buy an SSD, so pick one from a reputable brand such as SanDisk, WD or Kingston. Buy one with enough capacity for your needs. I'm going to be fitting an SSD with 240GB because the owner is going to be storing reasonable amounts of data on it, but they're not going to be storing massive amounts of photos, music or videos. If you're not sure what capacity you'll need, have a look at the label of the hard drive you'll be removing. It should have the capacity printed on the label, and if that hard drive was enough for your needs, then buy an SSD with a similar capacity. If you have a desktop PC, you'll probably find that the hard drive you're pulling out is larger than this, but SSDs don't come in the larger desktop size, so you'll probably need to order a bracket to convert the regular 2.5 inch SSD to fit the 3.5 inch fitting in your computer. Look online for an SSD 2.5 to 3.5 bracket. They're quite cheap. Having said that, have a look inside your computer case because some cases come with a fitting for the smaller drive size now. You're also going to need a Windows 10 installation USB and I've just made a video where I show you how to make one. For that, you're going to need a blank USB drive, eight gigabytes is ideal, a Windows computer that works and a good internet connection. So click on the link on your screen to go to that video and then come back to this one once you've created the USB drive. Next you'll need a good screwdriver set and you can find out which screwdrivers you'll need in the service manual. More on that shortly. And if you're doing this on a laptop, you'll need the charger when we get round to installing Windows because it's going to take a while. On some laptops it's really easy to remove the hard drive. If you turn it upside down and look at the bottom, you'll find a panel that you can unscrew and the hard drive is just inside. Unfortunately this is not one of those computers. And I think it's going to be one of those where I need to remove every screw and pull the whole thing apart just to get to the hard drive. The best thing you can do before starting anything is to go to the manufacturer's website and see if they have a service manual for your model of computer. The service manual usually gives you step-by-step -step instructions that show you which screws to remove, what kind of screwdrivers you'll need, and so on. If you look at the service manual and it seems too difficult, then you might be better off just taking the computer to a local expert to repair. And if the computer is still in its warranty period, then it's a good idea to take it back where you bought it. We need to take some precautions because of the risk of electrostatic discharge, so make sure you work on a static free table and take care not to touch any of the sensitive components inside the computer. And for your own safety, make sure you unplug your computer from the mains power supply before starting. So let's get started. I've unplugged the computer from the mains power supply. Now following the service manual, I'm going to remove the battery. Then I'm going to remove the screw holding the DVD drive. Then I'm going to remove the DVD drive. I need to remove these two rubber bumpers from the base. Now I'm going to remove all the other screws from the base. And I can start to pry off the bottom cover. Once I've pried it off on all sides, I can remove the bottom cover. Now we can see the hard drive. It's connected to the system board by this cable, so I need to unplug the cable. Next, the hard drive is secured by three screws, so I need to remove them. Now I can lift out the hard drive, and I need to pull off this connector board. The hard drive sits in metal brackets, so I'm going to remove these screws and remove the brackets. 
If you want to, at this point, you can test the hard drive by plugging it into a working computer. It's always possible that the hard drive hasn't failed, and that something else in the computer has. You'll need a SATA to USB cable for this, which you can buy online. If you're working with a desktop computer, you'll need one of the SATA to USB kits with a power supply. If you fit the cable onto the hard drive, and then plug the USB into any computer, you'll know it's failed because nothing shows up on the screen. But for now, I'm just going to assume the hard drive has died. Now I'm going to fit the new SSD. I'm going to fit it into the bracket that came off the old hard drive, and screw in these screws. Next, I'm going to plug in the connector board that I took off the old hard drive. This can be seated back into the computer, and secured with the screws. The drive cable needs to be connected back up to the board. Now I'm just going to put the computer back together. It's the same as taking it apart, but in reverse. Finally, I can plug in the charger and we're ready to install Windows 10. With the new SSD installed, we just need to install Windows 10 using the Windows 10 installation USB. Every computer has a different way of booting up from a USB drive. On this laptop, I need to press the escape key repeatedly after I turn it on. Then the startup menu appears, and I can see that if I want to choose the boot device, I should press F9. Then I can use the arrow keys to select my USB drive, then press enter. I have a choice of 32-bit or 64-bit because my USB drive contains both versions. On most modern computers you should choose 64-bit, and if you get an error message then you can start again and choose 32-bit instead. When the Windows setup screen appears, choose your language and region, and click next. Then click install now. After a short wait, you'll get the Terms screen, so click the box to accept, and click Next. On the Next screen, select Custom, Install Windows Only. And then, if everything's gone to plan, you should see your SSD here. Mine has shown up as Drive Zero. Now, we could use the buttons down here to set up partitions just the way we want them, but because we're starting with a blank drive, I'm just going to let the computer sort it out for us. So click Next. Now you can go and do something else while Windows gets installed. This will take about 20 minutes. When you see the screen asking for your region, Windows 10 has been installed. Just follow the setup questions on screen, and you'll eventually get to the Windows desktop. At this point, you should leave your computer connected to the internet while it downloads the drivers it needs, and the latest updates. Normally, an hour will be long enough. So, how did that go? Please let me know in the comments below how you got on, and if you found this video helpful, please give it the thumbs up. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this from me in future, click on my face below and then hit the red subscribe button. And while you're here, why not check out one of my other videos? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.